It was never my intention to lecture you guys about who the biggest battery manufacturer is or which country produces the most lithium in the world. However, once in a while, when you truly want to understand the current status of a certain industry, it is important to know the entire value chain. So this is what I'm going to do today. I want to dive deeper into the automotive lithium ion battery value chain. In the part one of the video, I'm going to focus on the upstream raw material and the component manufacturers. And in the second part of the video, which is coming up next week, well, hopefully next week, I'm going to talk about the downstream battery pack manufacturers and then the electric vehicles manufacturers, including Tesla, of course. And by understanding the battery industry, we'll get to know among all the big automobile companies who is committed to producing electric vehicles and who is not. I'm Lei, let's get started. First of all, the battery value chain can be divided into roughly six segments, raw material and process material, cell component manufacturing, cell manufacturing, battery pack manufacturing, electric vehicles manufacturing, as well as recycling. We're going to focus on the first three today. There are companies like Mitsubishi, Panasonic, and Tesla who try to control several segments along the value chain. And there are also companies like General Motors who are happy with just making electric vehicles. I'm not gonna say which choice is better, but one thing is for sure, different choices lead to different consequences. So let's start with all the raw materials. A wide range of elements are used in lithium ion battery cells, including lithium, nickel, cobalt, manganese, aluminum, copper, silicon, tin, titanium, and carbon in a variety of forms. Some of them are used in producing the anode. Most of them are used in cathode. Lithium ion batteries are named after the materials used in the cathode. For example, all Tesla cars use NCA lithium ion batteries because the materials used in the cathode are nickel, cobalt, and aluminum. Currently, among all the materials listed, three are considered to be critical raw materials because of their high supply risk. 51% of the world's cobalt is produced in the Democratic Republic of Congo, so in the future, securing the cobalt supply could be a huge problem for automakers. Other critical raw materials include natural graphite and silicon metal, which are primarily used in the anode of a battery. On top of this, China is the major producer for many elements listed, including natural graphite and silicon. Therefore, American and European car companies should start working on securing their raw material supply right now. Otherwise, when the era of electric vehicle comes, the Chinese auto companies will have a lot of advantages over American and European car companies. Tesla is already working on securing its raw material supply either through Panasonic or by building factories in China. We have yet to see any actions from General Motors and Ford. If you think we only have to worry about the Chinese when it comes to the lithium ion battery productions, you're wrong. When it comes to the cell component production, which means the production of cathode, anode, electrolyte, and the separator, the Japanese and the Chinese dominate the market, taking around 58% of the cathode material market share. Five types of lithium ion batteries exist in the market right now shown on the screen. And for your information, NCA batteries are used in Tesla cars, LMO batteries are used in Nissan Leaf, and MC batteries are used in Tesla Powerwall. Different types of batteries are used for different applications because of their relative advantages in terms of their lifespan, energy density, power density, and so on. For example, NCA batteries have better performance in terms of energy density and charge rate. This could be another reason why Tesla cars are so much better than a Nissan Leaf. But I feel silly comparing these two cars. In terms of the anode material production, the market is dominated by the Japanese and the Chinese once again. Same thing happens in the electrolyte and the separator production. So I'm speaking to you, General Motors. Start partnering with the Chinese or the Japanese already. At least do something before it's too late. Moving on to the actual cell production. This is where Tesla's Gigafactory comes in. Remember I used to praise a lot about Tesla and its vertical integration? This is where the battery vertical integration starts. In terms of total lithium ion battery market share, Tesla takes around 6 to 8%. However, if we're talking about lithium ion batteries used in automobiles, once again, the market is almost exclusively dominated by the Chinese and the Japanese. Why am I not surprised? Tesla's Gigafactory single-handedly increased the US lithium ion battery production capacity from the third place after the Chinese and the Japanese to the first place. So although Tesla is making 6-8% to 8 of the world battery right now, 
it's going to become the leader in battery production once the Gigafactory is firing on all cylinders. So in conclusion, I hope you guys have a good idea of how the battery industry is by now. It is a complicated industry where the Chinese and the Japanese obviously have a lot of power and control. However, if we look closely, there are also opportunities for the American and the European car companies. For example, more than half of the world's lithium reserve is located in South America. I'm sure American companies could start by taking advantages of the proximity. Also, Umicore, a European company, used to be the biggest supplier of cathode materials for batteries in smartphones. Similar competence could be transferred to making automobile batteries. You see what I mean? The automobile battery industry is a relatively young one. From the raw materials to the actual battery production, opportunities are everywhere. At this stage, I really don't see why General Motors or Volkswagen won't invest more in the battery industry. I want to show you guys this one last picture. It shows the battery production, capacity and utilization by countries. The blue box is the level of production and the empty box is the production capacity. As you can see, there is a lot of overcapacity. This is exactly why auto giants are not building battery factories. Their argument is that if there is overcapacity, why do we want to build more factories to add to it? However, I think they got the cost and effect wrong. It is the huge opportunity that caused the overcapacity, not the other way around. All right, this is it for today. Thanks for watching. In the second part of the video, I'll talk about battery manufacturers like Panasonic and Samsung. So stay tuned. As always, I'm Lei. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.